terribly surprising, but we did in fact get the news that Jalen Brunson signing with the Knicks. What was, I guess, a little bit more surprising is that he just went ahead and straight up canceled the meeting with the Mavericks. Although some people think that that happened like a little bit ago because a couple hours before this supposed meeting was going to go down, everybody was chilling in Nico's office at the Mavericks yeah, compound. They're just so. watching Slovenia play. Yeah. Got to yeah. check out Luca doing his thing. Like, do you think it was one of those things where they just, they were like, Oh, we got clearance from the league office that we're uh, not in danger for tampering. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't need to meet. Yeah. We're good. Pass. Pass. I, I wasn't surprised by this whatsoever. The contract wasn't particularly surprising. What I did see that amused me, but it was also interesting to see like how long that actually lasted is that Jalen Brunson was the fourth player ever to sign a $100 million contract with the Knicks, joining Carmelo Anthony, Julius Randle, and Alan Houston. Alan Houston. The luminaries, all of them. But he is the first player in NBA history to sign a $100 million deal with a new team, despite having never That is a record been that will never be broken. An all-star. Never! A record that will never be broken. That's going to be like Emmett's rushing record. Oh, but see, what? okay, but it's with a new team that is the difference. Oh, that's, so it does stand. That's right. That's why, because I know you're thinking, hold on. Damn. Didn't Anthony Simons just sign that four-year, $100 million deal? But that's what they put the caveat in there. With a new team for $100 million. That being said, I still absolutely think this record will be broken. It'll probably be broken repeatedly. But does that make Mavs fans feel any better? That he got a hundred million dollars, or that he's the that, no, that, that this he's is the, so unprecedented yeah, for his resume. For, exactly, because uh, he's I, a good player. I gotta say, just on the, I, I don't know if this is again cognitive dissonance or just the way of coping or whatever else. Looking at the truckwreck.com fan text the last few days, I feel like it is majority like, see you, dude. Like yeah. you can go. Yeah, which I, I don't. I mean, that clearly wasn't the mood of the fan base during the playoffs, but I do think it probably just reached a point for a lot of the fans where it was like, your dollar figure is just way too much, dude. Do you think it came down to, because Chuck Cooperstein, I was going to say alluded to this, he flat out said it yesterday on G-Bag. Sorry, I didn't ask for the audio ahead of time. He goes, look, Mavericks fans have had 72 hours to process this news. Now it's time to move on. So I feel like Chuck Cooperstein was like at the forefront with G-Bag. He's like, you had three days. You got it. Let's move on. There is a little bit of you know, it's just the coping mechanism, I guess. But it's turned a little aggressive too far to the other side, I feel like, where it's like, Brunson's trash. Like, you're clearly not a better team right now than you were yesterday boarding before Jalen Brunson was officially gone. No, I think you're right about that. I think one of the things that makes me feel better is I still think you're a better team right now than you were at the end of the season. you know. Yes, you're a better team now than you were when you left the floor against Golden State. Yeah. But you're not better than you were yesterday morning before Brunson you left. You are 100% but, but I, right. But I think you can still feel better about this team's better, knowing that Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be back, and you've got Christian Wood, and you, you've brought in JaVale McGee, which is fine. I, you know, I don't want JaVale McGee playing a ton of minutes so you go ahead replace Dwight Powell yeah. do whatever but like I'm not here to tell you JaVale McGee and Jaden Hardy are going to be the two players that like roll in and save this franchise yeah I, I, don't, I don't know that Hardy even plays this year to be honest like I mean he's he's still very raw like they're, yes. they're, they're, even though he's got an incredible skill set and he's an incredible talent he was awful in the G League. he was really bad and, and I mean there were flashes there were games he was sure. really dominant and he was really, but then there were like if you go go you can go look through his game log or go look up the highlights of certain games there are games on there where it's like he went 0 for 11. Like he yeah. had no shots. And so, but I mean, that's a player that you're probably going to have to wait a little bit on. And JaVale McGee's not like, you know, a super stud. Um, he's he's going to be a contributor for them. And I'm sure he'll make an impact and a positive one. He's better than Dwight Powell. But yeah, you're, you're not as good as you would have been if just Jalen Brunson would have stayed. And, and I think... I think this is what it boiled down to and why I thought we would and should keep Brunson to begin with from the 817. I'm a Mavs fan, and I'm only upset that we lost Jalen Brunson for nothing. That's out. That's it. Outside of that, by Jalen Brunson. And I think that's very fair because well, we talked about this with Callie Kaplan yesterday. This is not a Mavericks team that has a like plethora of uh, of uh, of options or like ammunition in terms of assets. You, you don't have your first round pick next year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you didn't have your first round pick this year, though I know they work some magic with uh, with picking up Hardy. You don't have a ton of players 
on great contracts. Like some of the players that you would want to get rid of, Powell, you know, we'll see how that goes. Hardaway, that's a bad contract. Bertans, that's a horrendous contract. And so like Dorian Finney-Smith is looking more and more like that's going to be a good contract that other teams would want. You're not even eligible to do anything with that for at least a couple more months. And so the Mavericks don't have a plethora of assets that they would want to move off of because clearly Luka would be like an amazing asset, but you don't want to move off of that. And so losing your second best player, make no mistake, he was absolutely your second best player for nothing. That's the part that second really best player stayed. last year. I think Christian Wood's a better player. Okay, and and that that's part of the reason why I think they're a better I think team. Mike now. is with you there too, and we will we will see. You got to hope, in, at least in certain part, that Christian Wood stays healthy. But I do think the potential is there, healthy and motivated. Yes, and we've already heard buzz from some of the staff with the Mavericks. I mean, what are they going to say right now? Oh my God, this was a mistake. But <laughs> we have heard from staff and people with the Mavericks that he's like, I want to play winning basketball. And I'm ready to make the sacrifices necessary to play winning basketball. So if that motivation is there, if he stays healthy, I absolutely see the opportunity for him to be the second best player. And just for the record, and I know people bring this up again and again and again, and Brad Townsend said something about this, and I get it. And you're probably right. He asked a Mavs source, how is this not tampering? The Mavs source, it is 100% a violation. Rock on. You don't get Jalen Brunson back. Like, they're not going to just give you, they're not going to go, you know what? You're right. And then they're going to give you, like, one of those treasure chests from your little phone game that you play, depending, whatever that phone game is. And you're like, yes, what do I get? A second round pick and a trade exception? That's not what's going to happen. They might punish the Knicks by taking away oh, a second round pick, but that's going to be the end of it. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where everybody tampers. Right. So like I've always I read that book. I, I've I've yeah, ever, I've always been of the opinion, uh, bringing it to real life. I've always been of the opinion blackouts from drinking do not happen nearly as often as people claim. And when somebody does something stupid the night before and then your buddy's like, what? I, what even happened? I blacked out. You want to call them out for that. You want to say, no, you didn't. You remember exactly what you did last yeah. night. But it's the social contract. And you go, I want to be able to claim blackout for dumb stuff I did and remember too. So I can't call them out because then I want to be able to claim in the future. Same sort of thing. Like you can't punish the Knicks because you're all doing it and you want to be able to tamper in the future. Can I tell you, people don't bring up the negatives about not drinking enough. There's probably not a ton, but as a non-drinker, that's one of the negatives is I can never use that as an excuse. They're like, you're just a jerk. Yeah. And sometimes they have a point. Yeah. Is if I say something, I can't be like, I'm sorry, I was drunk. They're like, no, you weren't. You're just kind I mean, of you could sure. say it and just tell people like, <laughs> but they wouldn't believe it. Although for the longest time, we would go out to fan hangs and or we would do our show on remotes and somebody would buy me a beer. And I was like, that's really nice. Do you want it? Or can I give it to somebody else? And they're like, oh, why? And I was like, I don't drink. And they go, are you serious? I thought that was just like a bit, like that was your character. And I said, Yeah, there's no way like somebody with your energy wouldn't drink. Yes, that is very, that is very fair. But then Colby would get mad at me and he goes, did you just turn down that beer? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, I don't drink. And he goes, yeah, I drink. Colby absolutely drinks. Give like, it to Col well, I don't know if he drinks now. He's all ripped. And God, stuff, so. he is. He looks like a freaking made out of granite or Ugh, something. An Adonis. It's now, just you're right about that. <laughs> now, in terms of... JaVale McGee, although I do need to throw this out there as well. The overwhelming favorite to get Kyrie Irving remains the Lakers. Like, even ahead of the Nets, him staying with the Nets. The Lakers are essentially even money. Next on the list, the Nets, who are tied with the Mavericks. So, if you think this is the end of it, and I've heard rumors about, you know, trying to swing some kind of trade about Colin Sexton, which I think will be more complicated because he might be your plan B in this whole scenario, but... I still think there could be some wacky stuff that happens, but you did get JaVale McGee. He does bring defense and sure. rim protection to the team, which is something that Christian Wood does not bring, and you have lied. Yeah, and he'll he'll be, a, of course, a lob option for Luka. There'll be a lot for of like, sure. oh, highlight finishes of, you know. So, I mean, there there's a benefit to JaVale McGee. It's just like, I don't He's not going to play more than like what he's played the last few years, like 15 minutes. That's, that's the kind right. of guy that he is.
I, I no, I definitely think that you're probably right. Reggie didn't like it last night. I was up here last night. I went in here during a break, and I was like, I don't need a hater, right? No, I was like, I don't need Shacked and a fool. Like, I don't want to spend the mid, like the twenty million on Shacked and a fool. He's like, that's not even a real character. That that's a made up thing. You, that's not a, a valid argument. I mean, I was doing a bit mainly. Yeah, so. and I was gonna say he's moved beyond that. I think there was a minute where. You know, maybe that was kind of happening. Oh, Theo Pinson's back, by the way, according hey, to the fan I Look, I support that because I did like how fired up this team seemed to genuinely be for one another throughout the regular season, especially in the playoffs. And I know Theo Pinson is a big part of that. 